Welcome back to One Stop Law. Should Muslim girls be allowed to attend classes by wearing headscarf or hijab? This new year, January 1st, 2022, started off with this debate on the hijab ban. Now, in this video, uh, I will take you through first the factual uh, events as to which led to this uh, hijab issue. Finally, uh, we came across the Karnataka High Court judgment on 15th March uh, of this year. But I will not analyze the judgment in this video. I will do that in my next video. This video is dedicated to uh, the three aspects on this issue of hijab ban. Specifically, the factual aspect, the legal aspect and the social aspect. So, let's get started with the video. This hijab controversy took grounds about three months back, last year in December 2021, when in Udupi, a coastal district of Karnataka, witnessed the first instance of six Muslim girls being denied entry into an educational institution because they were wearing hijabs. The administration said that the girls violated the prescribed uniform dress code of the college which the students disagreed and maintained that it was within the code of conduct of the college as the girls were permitted to wear scarf inside the campus. The girls complained of discrimination by teachers on religious grounds and started protesting outside the gates of the colleges to draw the attention of the district administration. Adding fuel to that, the Karnataka Education Minister, Mr. B.C. Nagesh, said on January 20, 2022 that coming to school or colleges in hijab is tantamount to indiscipline so by january 2022 the protest uh, had spread to other colleges and districts in karnataka and tension started building up which soon uh, snowballed into a statewide issue however the situation became more ugly and disturbing when to counter these hijab ban protests, pictures and videos of students wearing saffron shawls and turbans uh, to campuses of colleges which included Mahatma Gandhi Memorial College in Udupi started going viral. And soon this issue spread it like a wildfire and took no turn, time to turn into a national debate. Many people said that stopping a community, in this case the Muslim girls, from entering classrooms because they were wearing hijab is taking away their fundamental right given to them by our Indian constitution. And so on 31st January 2022, these girls from Udupi College approached the Karnataka High Court challenging the hijab ban in the different pre-university colleges in Karnataka through several writ petitions under articles 14, 19 and 25 of the Indian Constitution. Meanwhile, the Karnataka government justified the ban on hijab inside the classrooms under its 1983 Education Act. In an order dated 5th February 2022, it said that under Section 133 of the 1983 Act, the government reserves the right to issue appropriate directions to schools and colleges to ensure maintenance of public order. It also said that the colleges which fall under the Karnataka Board of Pre-University in Education must follow the dress code published by the College Development Committee or the Administrative Committee. On 8th February, the Karnataka High Court gave its first hearing to the case and on 9th February 2022, the Chief Justice of the Karnataka High Court, Justice Rituraj Avasti, constituted a full judge bench to hear the hijab row. In the meantime, the Supreme Court of India refused to list a plea seeking transfer of the hijab row petitions from the Karnataka High Court to the Supreme Court on urgent basis, holding that exams have nothing to do with the hijab ban. On 23rd February 2022, pending its judgment, the Karnataka High Court issued an interim order to maintain status quo in Karnataka and restrained all students from wearing saffron shawls, scarves, hijab or any religious flags into the classrooms. Many schools and colleges in Karnataka were kept shut down for days during this time. 
and after a marathon hearing in the case on 15th March 2022, the Karnataka High Court announced its much-awaited order in the hijab issue and much to the shock of the petitioners, the full bench of the Karnataka High Court dismissed the batch of petitions filed by Muslim girls studying in the pre-university colleges in Udupi seeking the right to wear hijab in classrooms and it held that hijab is not an essential re religious practice of, of Islam. Following the day of the judgment, the very next day, students wearing hijab were not allowed to give their university examinations, ongoing in, in university examinations. Uh, during the pendency of the court uh, judgment, they were giving the in exams, but just following the day the judgment came, they were denied entry in the exam hall. On that very day itself, on 15th March 2022, the students filed an appeal against the Karnataka High Court order uh, challenging the uphold of the hijab ban uh, direction of the Karnataka government and the Supreme Court had said that the matter will be taken up after uh, the celebration of Holi. Meanwhile, again on 22nd March 2022, ruling out uh, the possibility of holding any re-exam for those who skipped them on account of hijab row, the Karnataka Education Minister for Primary and Secondary Education, uh, Mr. B.C. Nagesh, said that there is no such system for absentees or for provision for any re-examination for students who miss the exams on this hijab ban ground. The latest uh, update in this uh, regard is that the All India Muslim Personal Law Board has also moved to the Supreme Court. Uh, on 28th of March 2022, challenging the Karnataka High Court's hijab ban verdict. Now, that was the factual aspect on the hijab ban issue so far. Now, let us look into the constitutional aspect of the issue. The students here feel that their fundamental rights have been violated under Article 20, 25 of the Indian Constitution. What does Article 25 provide for? It guarantees to every citizen of India the freedom of conscience and freedom to profess, practice and propagate one's own religion. That is, it casts a responsibility on the state to see that no one interferes with one's right to practice, profess and propagate one's own religion. However, like many fundamental rights, this right is also not absolute but is subjected to some reasonable restrictions. So some restrictions are given under uh, sub clause 1, 25 clause 1 and some are given under 25 clause 2. Sub clause, uh, clause 1 says that uh, the right to practice one's own religion is subjected to the restrictions of public order, morality and health. And uh, same sub clause 2 says or uh, you know kind of empowers the state to make law if necessary to impose restriction on religious freedom in order to protect public order, morality or health. So what we see that uh, till the time your fundamental right to practice religion does not violate any public order, does not violate any public morality or health or, uh, or freedom to practice other any other person's right to religion, till that time you have every your right to uh, practice your religion is protected now the question here arises that whether wearing hijab to classrooms by muslim girls violate any public order morality or health that remains a question so the question arises or question remains what can or how far can a person be allowed to do in the name of religion so after dealing with or after discussing with you the constitutional aspect of this issue, let us deep dive into the legal aspect on this issue. Now in this uh, segment, I will discuss with you certain judgments of the Supreme Court on freedom of religion and not specifically on the hijab ban. For the hijab ban judgments, I reserve my following next, the video coming up next. I will dedicate that entire video on the issue of uh, judgments uh, given by courts time to time on the case of hijab ban. So coming to the legal aspect and the Supreme Court verdicts on freedom of religion, we can see the first verdict was given by the first judgment was given by Supreme Court in 1954. 
where while defining the contours of a freedom of religion under the Indian Constitution, the Supreme Court said that only essential religious practices under the Indian Constitution will be protected and no other practices. In 1954, which is popularly known as the Shirur Mutt case, a seven-judge bench of the Supreme Court held that the term religion will cover all religious, all rituals and practices which are integral to a religion. And the test to determine what is integral to a religion is termed as the ERP, known as the Essential Religious Practice Test. The second verdict in this regard came in 2004 in the famous case of Anand Marg case, where the division bench of the Supreme Court held that Anand Marg section had no fundamental right to perform Tandav dance in public streets since it did not fall under the essential religious practice of their religion. The most controversial judgment in this regard came in the case of IAF Muslim Airman case of the year 2016. Now it was a three judge bench and one of the judges, the very famous Justice D.Y. Chandrachur, he, who is to be our um, next uh, Chief Justice of India very soon. Now in this case a three judge bench of the Supreme Court upheld the decision of discharge of a Muslim airman from the Indian Air Force for keeping a beard. The Supreme Court said further that no material evidence has been uh, produced before the court to indicate that the appellant professes a religious belief that would bring him within the ambit of Regulation 425 B, which applies to personnel whose religion prohibits them the cutting of the hair or shaving of the face of its members, unlike the Sikhs for whom it's an essential part of their religious practice. So undoubtedly, this matter is very, very complicated and the Supreme Court has also given very diverse uh, judgments uh, so far. Now we looked into the factual and constitutional aspect on this issue. We also looked into the legal point on this issue. Now let us look into the social perspective of this issue. Let us keep aside all the administration, court, judgment, everything aside and look at it from the point of our social perspective, we as a society. Now if a girl child wears hijab because or claiming it as a part of her practicing her own religion, does that really harm anybody? Does that violate anybody else's right to practice their religion? Of course, the uh, issue of uh, women empowerment is there. But when what happens when it, you know, that women empowerment becomes a subsidiary issue and it becomes something else? Like protesting against this hijab ban, does that call for somebody else to protest by wearing a saffron shawl at educational institutions? And this is the most dangerous and sad, saddening part of this issue. See, our culture is that uh, as adults, we don't choose to fight or abuse in front of children as we don't want to impart that kind of culture to the child. Children are our future. They are the future of our family. They are the future of our nation. Think of that, you know, a pre-university college in Karnataka that children are now divided right from the middle on the right of on the line of religion you have the Muslim children supporting the hijab wear of girl students on one side and on the other hand you have the Hindu students protesting against the hijab by putting on saffron shawls so what we see is that in the false pretext of women empowerment and gender equality instead of uh, celebrating knowledge in educational institutions, we are witnessing this level of toxicity in the society. Do we realize the level on, at which this communal divide has gone to? To conclude this video, I would like to say that India is very dear to all of us. Our culture, our cultural heritage is what we stand for and it, it is very, very precious to all of us. The strength of our nation and of our culture is unity in diversity. I remember the first chapter I learned in our history book in class 9 was India as a country and unity in diversity. So in the, un, unity in diversity is the very DNA of our country and it means and includes, unity in diversity includes a little bit of toleration. If there is need to tolerate a little bit of diversity, 
if un to, until and unless it harms anybody else there is no harm in it it's very saddening to see the changing structure of tolerance and secularism in india these days think should we allow this uh, seeds of communalism or communal hatred to be sown so deep into the minds of our young minds of our future generation will it help india to prosper in any way give it a thought on that note i leave leave you all on in this video then my next video will be on a detailed analysis of all the judgments of the high court so far on this hijab ban issue thank you all